Let's calculate together the density of a body-centered cubic arrangement. For example, potassium. There's lots of elements that take on a body-centered cubic arrangement where you have one full atom in the center and then a simple cubic-ish style arrangement of these eighths buttressed against that central atom on each of the eight corners. So this unit cell does not have an edge length of 2r because there's some gap in between all of the different eighths. And instead, you actually have four radii to go from one corner to the opposite corner of the cube, which is what I'm trying to show here. It's gonna make it a little more complicated than simple cubic, but we can still handle it. And there's two atoms per unit cell. Density is mass over volume, so all we're gonna need, ha, all we're gonna need is the mass of two atoms of that metal and the volume of one unit cell. The volume is gonna be the most annoying thing to do there. The mass of two atoms isn't too bad. We can calculate the mass as long as we know the number of moles, and we know the number of moles is the number of atoms divided by Avogadro's number. The number of atoms that we're dealing with here is two, and Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. If we do that on our calculator, we'll get the number of moles that just two atoms represents. That's two divided by 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. I get 3.321555, oops, uh, 3211558 moles. Oh, times 10 to the negative 24 moles. <laughs> Probably could have written that better. It's a very tiny number. It's times 10 to the power of negative 24. That's wild. The actual mass based on moles is moles times molar mass. Here's where it's important that it's potassium. The molar mass of potassium is 39 grams per mole. So number of moles, 3.3211558 times 10 to the negative 24 moles times 39.098 grams per mole. This is a multiplication, even though I had to write it on two separate lines. Per moles times moles cancels, and we're left with grams as our answer. Thank goodness. Times 39.098 gives me a mass of 1.2985 times 10 to the power of negative 22 grams. Cool, that seems reasonable for just two atoms of a metal like potassium. We can actually fill that into the numerator of our density calculation here, 1.2985 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. Now the volume of one unit cell is gonna be a little more challenging. What I want to point out here is that it takes four radii, one for the corner atom, two for the whole atom in the center, and one for the extra corner atom, only the opposite of the first one, to get from one corner to the next. We're actually going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions for this. What we end up with is A for edge length, that's A squared, plus a squared plus a squared equals that distance, which is 4r, all squared as well. You might remember the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is the same except you have three dimensions. a squared, that's side length squared, plus another side length squared plus another side length squared gives you the diagonal 4r all squared. Now A is the edge length here. It's what we're going to need to cube in order to get the volume. I can write that down for ourselves here. The volume is actually A cubed. See how I wrote that there? But we're going to need to get it in terms of R, aren't we? Well, this is 3A squared. And when we square all this, we get 16R squared. To isolate for a, we divide by 3, and we can square root it. So we get a equals the square root of 16r squared divided by 3. 
I can simplify that to 4 over root 3 of R. So, my volume is 4 over root 3 of R, all cubed. Told you it was going to be a little more complicated, but don't worry, you've got the edge length based on R. Some teachers actually give you that already. And you just cube the edge length to get volume. Now what are we going to end up with here? We end up with 64 R cubed over 3 root 3 if you're into working with these radicals. You can just type stuff into this formula if you want. But we need the radius to get the volume of the cell. The radius of a potassium atom, the van der Waals radius, is 280 picometers. What I like doing is converting pico into times 10 to the power of negative 12, because that's what pico means as a prefix. And then to convert meters to centimeters, I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 100. That's 280 times 10 to the negative 10 centimeters. The reason I like converting to centimeters is because density is almost always given as grams per centimeter cubed. It's just easier to work with centimeters at the beginning as opposed to getting picometers cubed and then having to fiddle with it. The radius is 280 times 10 to the negative 10 centimeters. If I plug that in here, I end up with that's 64 over 3 root 3 times 280 times 10 to the negative 10 centimeters all cubed. I'm going to plug that all into the calculator at once, but I'll show you how I'm going to do it. That's 280 times 10 to the power of negative 10 equals, and then I'm going to take that to the power of 3 for the cubic. There's some number. I'm going to multiply that by 64 divided by 3 and divided by another root 3. Notice how I have to divide both of those. I could have divided open bracket 3 root 3 or whatever. I don't care how you do it. Just make sure that when you type it into your calculator, you personally get 2.7038. Times 10 to the negative 22 centimeters cubed. That's a very tiny volume, and it should be a tiny volume because it's a tiny unit cell. It's only two atoms big, right? So I'm going to take that number and plug it into the density formula that we have here 2.7038 times 10 to the negative 22 centimeters cubed. And when I divide these two numbers by each other, Oh, the times 10 to the negative 22s cancel. I don't have to worry about that. I'll type it in anyways, just to show you. 1.2985 times 10 to the power of negative 22 divided by 2.7038 times 10 to the power of negative 22. There we go. I get 0 0.48025 grams per centimeter cubed. It doesn't seem like a whole lot. In fact, water is only one gram per centimeter cubed, and this apparently is less than that. But there is empty space in between the potassium atoms. Potassiums are relatively big because they are a metal towards the left of the periodic table, and they are light, at least relative to most of the other metals for molar mass. So, the density here is 0 0.48 grams per centimeter cubed. It looks like I need five, two significant figures because of the radius unit that I had here. So this is 0 0.48 grams per centimeter cubed. Cool, I hope you didn't get lost in the numbers there because what really mattered is that to get the density of a body-centered cubic, you need the mass of two atoms, which will always be this number of moles, and you multiply it by the molar mass of the metal you're given. It's probably going to be a metal, that's why I said that. That gives you grams. It's going to be some tiny number, probably 10 to the negative 22, maybe negative 21, whatever. And then to get the volume of one cell, you're going to need some more complicated math. This part will always be true up to here. The volume of a body-centered cubic cell is 64 R cubed over 3 root 3. You plug your van der Waals radius into that. 
I recommend putting it into centimeters first. Get the numbers, crunch it, and do it. If you're worried about simple cubic or face-centered cubic or something else, watch the other videos. Until then, best of luck.